passed away. We wanted men. Forty-six of the Smugglers Galaxy Podcast, your favorite Star Wars podcast for smugglers in the galaxy. Today, I have got a very special guest, my wife Mandy. Hello. <laughs> Jason is in Disney World, so I decided to bring her in, and she could talk about the joys of being a Star Wars collector wife, and uh, talk about her collecting habits, and because she's got a pretty impressive, uh, what is it, Wicket? Collection and Gremlins. Yeah. Gremlins, ET. So, a little bit of everything. You got ad ads, but they're downstairs. Yes. And Chewbacca. And yeah. And hands and skulls and glow worms and just 80s nostalgia. Yeah. Did you pick anything up this week? <laughs> I pick things up randomly all the time. I did, however, get a special gift from my husband. Yeah. Because it's Father's Day. Oh, no, for me. Yes. No, yes. To me, from you. Yes. Not from, for Father's Day, for you, from the dogs. Correct. I got... The Young Jedi Adventures. Oh. Yes. Because I saw the pictures of the new release of that line um, at Celebration in Europe, and I told Glenn, I have to have them all. <laughs> <laughs> so he picked up a couple packages for me and has started me off on that. Yep. Another so. rabbit hole to go down. Yes. And hopefully they'll be cheap. Those little suckers, how much do you think those things were? Uh, $15 a pack. Yeah, that's how much they were. Yeah, I mean, that's what I would expect to pay. I mean, anything more, I wouldn't want them. Okay, I thought that was expensive for 15 bucks when I opened it. When I hit, a, hit to register with them and saw 15 I was a little shocked. I think so, too, but that's kind of to be expected right now. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Then my other pickup was I got a couple little vintage um, gremlins. Yeah. That aren't very well known. They're kind of, I guess, uh, what are they called? Knockoffs. Yeah, bootlegs. Bootlegs. Yeah, that's what they are. So. Cool. But yeah, that's the only thing I got this week. Yeah. Well, my dogs got me a new grill for Father's Day. They did. So that's uh. It was grilling out on it today, setting it up, and grilled, grilled, threw some burgers on it. It's like a griddle, like pit boss griddle thing. So old grill was getting bad, mentioned that I needed a new one, and or probably this year was going to be the year for a new one, and boom, one shows up on my doorstep. Yeah, the dogs asked me to start searching. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Father's Day present a little yeah. early. I, Glenn got it early because... It was a mishap at the store when I was picking it up. I didn't get what I really wanted. And then I also needed him to help me bring it in because it was way too heavy for me to carry. And then I sat there and watched him put it together in the heat. Yes. <laughs> so, but the burgers were amazing. And from what I can tell, you really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Now I'm buying stuff for it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a, a different surface. You can't use metal on it. So I've got to buy a bunch of uh, silicone stuff. And sorry about my dogs. They're acting up. I'll probably keep them out here in a second. Uh, and then I got a Enamel Empire did a ghost, if you guys know, the infamous red uh, Millennium Falcon schematic t-shirt. Uh, Enamel Empire did a ghost version of that, so I picked that up this week. Let me kick my dogs out. Give me a sec. Puppies out. Go. Go. Maybe they'll behave. But, uh, so what What's it like? So I, there's not a whole lot of news. Jason's the one that normally does the news, so and I don't keep up with it. So that's his job, and I don't know if there's any news. Do you know if there's any? There's not any news. That I'm, yeah, she's looking at me going, you're the Star Wars geek. <laughs> I'm just the wife. <laughs> she's just the wife. I'm just the enabler. Yes, you are. <laughs> so uh, what's it like? What's it? 
like being, like being very the wife yeah the guy. wife of a Star Wars fanatic. Um, well, I, I did not know what I was getting into <laughs> when we got married. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but Glenn did not have any Star Wars stuff besides T-shirts when right. we met. Mm-hmm. Um, past relationships, uh, I guess, kept those items, <laughs> didn't yeah. return them, or whatever the case was. So anyways, when we got together, when I would work on Saturdays, Glenn and my daughter would go out thrifting and garage sailing, and I just remember, and I have lots of pictures of it, I came home from work one day, and when I walked through the front door, there was boxes everywhere. There's boxes of Star Wars books, which I did not realize there were so many of those, and there were ships all over the floor, and I walk in, and I'm like, what is happening? And they both look at me just with the biggest grins on their face, like, ah! <laughs> and that was the end of the story. Yeah. That just, it just snowballed from there. Yeah. So we got a big, huge display cabinet um, from his parents, a couple of them, and they quickly filled up with all things Star Wars. I mean, things that I never could have even imagined that there was. So I just... Let him do his thing because I like to see how much he enjoys it. And then in return, he let me start collecting my things too. So, <laughs> yeah. One of our first toy shows that we went to, he had his eye on a Black Series Boba Fett Comic Con exclusive. Yeah, San Diego Comic Con. The San Diego Comic Con exclusive is the Boba Fett with the Han awesome. and Carbonite. Yep. Yeah, one of the first Black Series ever released. Yes. And I had. A shoebox of my original My Little Ponies and glow worms from when I was a little kid, which I wasn't really into all that kind of stuff at the time, and I knew he really wanted that piece. I happened to be walking by a booth, and this girl was like, does that box have a whole bunch of My Little Ponies and glow worms? Because it said MLP and glow worms on the side, and I'm like, well, yes, it does. And she bought it right there on the spot without even seeing in the box. So she was going to buy them all. I let her look through it. She wanted them all. Handed me a wad of cash. I t- found Glenn somewhere in the convention because we kind of split. We always get separated and go our own ways. Gave him the money and I said, go buy that thing over there. And he beelined it. And next thing you know, he comes back with a big old smile on his face and tears in his eyes. And he's like, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, but now... I'm kind of missing those glowworms and stuff. I've been kind of—I haven't gotten any My Little Ponies again because that's like the—I can't—that's—I can't touch that. But the glowworms, I got lucky when we were in Cincinnati last year. Yeah, it was last year. And um, I got a glowworm case full of all the twelve glowworms, and I have a whole bunch of extras, so I was able to start collecting those again, get some dolls. Um, but in addition to the glowworms, which is very small right now, I have a bookshelf overflowing with gremlins. I focus on um, Gizmo. I also like to focus on Greta because we have a little we had a little dog named Greta, and her name was because of the gremlin Greta. And I have an ET focus, quite a lot of those. So much so that I've actually sold off some. But I am army building the small little um, LVP figures of E.T. and the Gremlins. And I love furry critters. And that's why I have the Ewok focus. So I just as soon as I think I've completed a collection, I'm like, okay, I've, I've seen all of it. I haven't seen all of it. Next thing you know, something else comes up. We were at a show... It was a parking lot sale at one of our local antique malls that one of our friends puts on. And I was in a booth and I wanted to start collecting. I was missing a figure from the play school collection, um, the Woodland Park collection. And I saw one and she had several other items, several other figures from those collections. And there was one in there that was kind of weird looking. I wasn't sure. And then I overheard the guys behind me like, oh, look at those. And I was like, how much for the whole lot? So she gave me a price. I bought them all, showed Glenn. He's like, oh, cool. And then we went to a local toy store that were friends with the owners. And I asked about the one figure I wasn't sure. And they brought it to my attention that it was a Comic Spain Dolak. 
Dulac. I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. So now that's a whole nother rabbit hole I went down and I'm trying to collect all of those and I think I've got like <coughs> two more to go. <coughs> so yeah, it's like never ending. It's truly never ending because I'm no. sure as soon as I find those last two figures that I need for that, something else is going to come up and I'm going to be like, oh, I didn't know those existed either. Right. So because now I'm also trying to get the Disney Parks version or not the Disney Parks. They're the Star Wars Star Tours. Which, yeah, which is which... the same figures as the comic Spain, mm -hmm. but like, they were released, I don't know, like 10 years later or something. Gotcha. And just like a different paint scheme? Pretty much, yeah. But the Disney Star Tours has a couple other figures that the comic Spains didn't have. So, yeah. It's definitely a rabbit hole. <laughs> Thank goodness we got out of the pops. <laughs> yeah, that was that was another huge... I could, we could not support... This collecting plus the pop collecting anymore. Yeah. Although we've kept a few that are like special to us, but we've pretty much gotten out of that. All yeah, we, we were lucky enough to get our money back. We had enough high end ones to make our money back off the low end common ones uh, that we had lost, lost money on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But keeping the like the, the ones that like our grandbabies got us and like friends get us. Whenever somebody gives us something, which that those are special to us, so we keep those. Yeah, I try to anything that some anytime somebody gives me something, it tends to stay in my collection. Yeah, even if you already have five of them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what started you down like the ET and Gizmo rabbit hole? What? Yeah, that's crazy because I didn't have any kind of collecting stuff when we got together. Right. Um, but I think just watching you get into collecting all the stuff or recollecting all the stuff again, um, just going to toy shows with you and like seeing all the different things that everyone has. Every time I would see E.T. or Gremlin stuff, like it would make me remember watching those movies when I was a kid and just loving them. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'll pick a couple, couple items here and there just to have like a little bit of nostalgia and then pick up another, pick up another. And then like, you're sending me pictures like, Hey, I found this. Do you want it? I'm like, five bucks. Sure. Let's pick it up. I mean, if it's $5 or less, I'm going to grab it. Sometimes even $10 or less, depending on what it is, but I'm super cheap. And that's why I have so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, just getting to get back into it. And then now all of the club and, you know, Friends of ours that we've met in other states, they just randomly message Glenn, like, hey, does Mandy have this? Does she need this? Does she want it? So he'll shoot me his picture or he'll just be like, yeah, go ahead and get it. Yeah. And, and I've noticed that when we're at shows, even if we're separate, like if you, I go to a show and you're not there or you go to a show and I'm not there, I find more stuff for you than I do me and it's vice versa. Yeah. I do the same thing for you. So it's just, it, Jason always gives me crap because it's like you bought something else from Andy and I'm like, dude. <laughs> Oh, what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes when we're at shows, I try to be sneaky and get you something, but... I always find out. I know. Well, that last one we went to, I found that Thrawn. thought I was being sneaky. And, like, just as soon as I completed my transaction, because I kept looking around for you the whole time, just as I was putting my uh, flannel over it, I happened to look over, and there you are, and you're like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> so, yeah. There is no surprise in this guy here. No, and it's hard, and I'm hard to buy for. You're getting hard to buy for too, though. Yeah. It's pretty amazing when I find something ET wise that you don't have. I found something uh, at Joe at Joe Fest that you didn't have that I was pretty surprised. The the little pot oh the sitter. Avon pot sitter. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that a lot, and I just every time I see it, I I don't want to spend the money on it. Mm -hmm. But you got it for what five bucks? Yeah, yeah, that's a no brainer. Right. <laughs> Even if I already had it for five dollars, go and pick it up. I'll yeah. take another one. What's the, the probably the coolest piece you got? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a really hard one. Can we go by like collection? Sure. Of those pieces? Okay, so yeah. um okay. ET. I think the coolest piece is probably the mounted ET head. And where'd that come from? That came from an oddity show, I think. Or yeah, was, was it the oddity show? Yeah. Yeah, the Oddity Show in Atlanta, it's just a piece of wood, like a plaque. And then this guy hand molded an ET head and mounted it to it and like painted it. And like, it's just really weird to have like a mounted head, but it's a really cool piece because it's so realistic. That's one of my favorite ET pieces. 
Um, when it comes to gremlins, oh yeah, it would definitely have to be the one that you just got me recently. It's oh, yeah. the the J.C. Penney's like department tagged bagged. Right, um, it's it's the gizmo that you shake. It's the, the gizmo plus that you shake that makes noises. That you see them everywhere. Right, but it's still in the original packaging. It still has the J.C. Penney's tag on it, and it still has like the department catalog tag on it too. So that's that's a pretty cool piece that. I didn't know existed, and I'm happy that I have it. Yeah, I have other baggy pieces, but that one's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's pretty cherry. It's one of the best. It is the best looking one I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you see them normally in the eyes of scratched out, you know, kids play with them. And... Oh yeah, I have lots of those. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a bag full down in the I garage. I do. I have a whole bunch of them. And then, like, whenever I shake it to see if it still works, and they squeak, then the dogs all come running because they think I have a new toy, and it's a whole thing. Because then I'm trying to battle them off of me, and they get upset because I'm not giving them what they think is a squeaky toy. So then I have to find something else to, you know, make them forget about it. Oh, that's right, me. <laughs> and then let's see, when it comes to my Ewoks, I have so many favorites of the Ewoks. My most recent Ewok acquisition would be the cartoon Ewok. Curion, Quiron, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's the Spanish Ewok. Um, a friend of mine happened to upgrade theirs and offered this piece to me, so I snagged it in a heartbeat because I have been searching and searching and searching for this. It's the Wicket. There's also the Latara, I think. I don't know if I'll ever see that, but if I do, I'll probably snag that too. Unless I gotta take out a loan on it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get pretty pricey. All right. But two of my plush Ewoks in my collection that are one ofs, which are pretty cool, are those Stitcher samples. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right name for it or not. Um, it's when, what, when Lucasfilm went to the... Yeah, when Kenner was trying to figure out what they wanted to do with... Uh... Right. So the toy department is like, hey, we want fuzzy, plush bears that look like Ewoks that aren't scary so kids will like them even though they're murder bears. Right. But I, I did find a couple that were in a tote with a whole bunch of others. I pretty much bought the whole tote. We're on our way back and I'm looking at them all and I'm like, how come my finger goes on the neck of this? And I'm looking a little closer. I'm like, oh, these are like hand sewn. So when we got home, we're looking at it a little more and we're realizing they're different sizes, but they're kind of the same coloring, but they're not. So, uh, what did we get those in the beginning of last year? I think so. I think like been... February last year? Yeah. Because we took them to Cincinnati last year. Yeah. When was that? August? September? October. October? Okay. Yeah. So I brought those with me last year just to have some other people that collect those exclusively just to take a look at them to maybe give us an idea of like what they are. And no one could really give us an exact answer, but they were like, okay, they're close enough. They're something special. So, and then we had another friend who had a podcast with the lady from that department. We shot over some photos and she was like, yeah, I know those. Yeah. And kind of told us that that's what they were. They were like, come up with a bear. They either got shot down or they went along with it. And then I guess those ones were supposed to be tossed or destroyed or whatever. And then who knows? Someone picked them up and stuffed them themselves. I don't know. Brought them home there's, to their there's a lot of stuff that was supposed to get thrown out that never made it. Either yeah. never made it to a garbage can or made it to a garbage can and somebody somehow miraculously, miraculously ended up in the back of somebody's car. Right. So they ended up getting stuffed. They did get stitched. Who knows whose hands they went through all these years ago. But then they were at this yard sale. I picked them up and now they're in my collection and I love them very much. They're in special little cases. So I think those and the, the Spanish Ewok are probably my favorites. And then I just like the oddball stuff too. Like I like custom things. Mm -hmm. um, there's a girl out there who makes these little clay figures called Little Lazies. So I, I picked up the, the it's, a, it's actually two of my favorite things combined. It's um, it's a gremlin and an Ewok combined. And then the other one I have from the same little lazies is Yoda, but he's only got one eye. So he's Yoclops or Yoda Clops or something. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but I like the weird things like that, like the yeah. custom pieces and like 
the one-offs and just things like that. Those, I like just odd things. All right. Is there anything you're hunting right now? Right now, I'm hunting for the rest of the um, Comic Spain to finish that run and the rest of the Star Tours figures that are the same as the Comic Spain. Um, I don't know if I'm looking for anything else Star Wars related. I do collect Day of the Doll stuff and I'm now Day a Barbie. Dead. Day of the Dead, sorry. I'm now a Barbie doll collector <laughs> because I've been collecting the Day of the Dead series that they put out and this last series they put out. Um, they had a exclusive and I did not get that. So, and every time I see it, it's way outside of my price range. People what? would like $800. Are you kidding me? I am not. Wow. <clears throat> so I may never get that in my collection, but yeah. It'll happen when it goes down in a couple of years when people aren't hitting it. I don't know. Because I did get an extra one one time and like it's below value, but it's like a common one that there's still a whole bunch out there for it. So, because I was just trying to unload it for what I paid for it. Nobody wants it because they're going for like $55 now. Wow. So it's half price. Well, they were 75 Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you might as well hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give it to Kaya or one of the grandbabies if yeah. they ever get interested in that stuff. So, but yeah, that's... I'm always hunting Gremlins and E.T. stuff. Always. And if I get it for a good price, I'll duplicate whatever I have with my army building stuff. But if I see something that I don't have, I'm seriously going to think about it. <laughs> But as far as Star Wars, I don't know. Yeah. You did give me an ad at recently. Yeah, I did from Galaxy's Edge. Yes. That but was fun. They went right down into the collection. I don't think you've seen it since. No, I haven't. <laughs> I don't go down to your collection room very often. I did go down there the other day and show it off to one of my girlfriends that came over. But How is that, what? showing off the collection to your friends? They, because they're, they don't know about the whole Star Wars club and like, all of this stuff. So I had some girlfriends come over the other day and we like barbecued and hung out on our back deck and um, the weather was bad. We were supposed to go to the lake. So we ended up here. So when they came in, since we just remodeled, I showed, I was showing off the house and I got to my office and they were like, holy shit, what is this? <laughs> I said, yeah, I kind of collect a couple things. And I mean, you could hardly, every single wall, you can't even see what color it is in there because there's so much stuff in there. Um, but I let them in and they were like, wow. But when they turn around, because all the Star Wars stuff is on the wall with the door, when you first walk in, you see the gremlins and the ET stuff. So when they turned around, it's all the Star Wars. They were like, what is all this? So I always have to go and be like, yeah, my husband's a big, huge Star Wars fan. And like, this is my small collection. And then they're like, he has a collection? Well, oh, yeah. And then I take them downstairs to see your stuff. And they're like. Their draw just hits the floor. Yeah. They, they don't know what to think. <laughs> uh, most of the times they're like, I bet this is worth a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> it is. We've, we've invested a lot in this stuff. So, like, some people like invest in properties. We invest in toys, collectibles, yeah. whatever you want to call them. Yeah. <laughs> I know toys is like a, don't yeah. say that. Yeah. It's they're not toys. They're not toys, they're, they're, they're toys. action figures. Action figures. <laughs> yes. Same difference. It's all right. Just like we collect dogs. Right. And all of our animals are named Star Wars names. Mm -hmm. That is, yeah, because it's funny because you are always like, no more Star Wars names, and then they all end up with Star Wars names. Yeah. Started with Luke and Leia. Yeah. Our, when we got little kittens. We actually left it up to Kaya to pick, and we we're like, we want it to be a brother or sister name. And she ended up picking Luke and Leia because... Well, for, she wanted to name it, like, after, like, Aphrodite or something. Oh, yeah. We weren't... No, no, no. We weren't going to do that. No. She wanted it to be named the princess. And you were like, well, they were Princess Leia. And then she was like, ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Luke's is her brother. And then we did a medical foster, this little other uh, little dog beast, whatever she was at the time. She looked awful. And she looked like a gremlin. So that's how she got the name Greta. Well, actually, your aunt wanted her to, wanted us to name her Yoda, and she you did. were like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah, I squashed that immediately. No, nope, that's not happening. She was definitely a Greta. She embraced that name for sure. Yoda, mm -hmm. it just didn't suit her. Right. So, but then when Greta was getting older, and we got our another dog, another puppy, he came to us. His name originally was Camo. Yeah. 
yeah, that didn't suit him very, very much. No, not at all. So we pick Solo, and that's perfect for him because he's kind of a loner. He's my handsome little boy. Yeah. And then when Greta had passed, after a little while, Sabine just happened upon us. <laughs> what was her name? Zori? Yeah. They had which a is, her litter. Star Wars name. Her litter was all Star Wars names. Yeah, but Zori didn't suit her either. And I'm, since Glenn is like obsessed with Sabine and Rebels. Well, you had you had started to go through female Star Wars characters, and right. then you hit on Hera and Sabine, and I was like, oh, right. And that's what you were like, oh, I like those because Rebels. So right. Hera didn't really suit her. Sabine fit really well, so we went with that. And then when we got this last guy, how did we pick it? Oh, we picked That was Lucas. you and Kaya picked it. It was, yeah, because he has the mask. Right. He has Kanan's mask, and Kanan is a rebel. Yeah. Or from rebels. So that's how he came up with his name. And when we told you about it, you were down with it. So. Yeah. And it suits him. Mm -hmm. tea. As he's chewing a C-3PO up. Yeah. Yeah, the old C-3PO toy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there anything... Um, Shows or anything you're looking forward to, like toy shows or. Ooh, uh, well, we gotta stick to local shows this year. I would love yeah. to go back to Cincinnati. We missed Heroes Con this weekend. Yeah, Hero, it Heroes Con hurt this year because four horsemen are up there. Uh, it's been five years since we've been too, and yeah. it was just it snuck up on us. We always kind of look at it and go, Heroes Con's coming up, and then we don't either don't have the time or don't have the funds or. Because, you know, when, when we, Charlotte's such a fun town, we go up on Friday. So you have to pay for a hotel Friday night. You got to pay for a hotel Saturday night. And then we end up coming home Sunday. So we end up spending $500 to $1,000 just to get to the show. Right. And but Charlotte, we would like to stay a lot longer. So yeah. we really need to go for like a week so we can see all the other cool stuff happening. But we always have so many other trips planned. And then mm -hmm. we don't have enough like vacation time to put Charlotte in the mix of it. So. Yeah, that's kind of falling off. And yeah, Cincinnati's going to fall off this year, which again, I'm, I'm going to miss hanging out with everybody. And you kind of, Cincinnati was your first real like collecting trip. Yeah, it was. Where, we've been like, there a couple times, but this was the, the, the last time we went, they had the two shows on the same weekend. They right. had Xenia on Friday and Saturday. Well, we got in Friday during right. the setup, but Saturday we went. And then Sunday was the Cincinnati show. The Cincinnati show. So we got to do both of them right after the next when they're usually weekends, like a week apart. Right. I think this year they're two mm -hmm. weeks apart. But this was a cool experience for me because, like, I got to hang out with you and like your little group of friends from like all over the U.S. So right. that was that was pretty cool that I, that to get to see like how far it goes because I know we've had people from all over the U.S., even overseas, come to, like, our summer social and stuff. So that's kind of cool that they're it's reaching out that far. But to go another place and see how many other people are coming from other places and, like, you all know each other, mm -hmm. like, you wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for your collecting. Right, exactly. So, and then I got to meet a whole bunch of people that are up there. So yeah. a lot of the shop owners are really cool. We've run into them two two times we've gone or three times. I think that that was our third time in Cincinnati. Okay. So we've, we've seen these people... For the third time this year, and as many people as they see coming through their door all the time, when you start talking to them and you're like, yeah, I was here last time doing this. They're like, oh, and then they remember you. And then you get to chatting and, you know, they're, they're just sharing all sorts of stuff with you. And it's just, it's a really cool community up there because they support each other. Right. And they're like telling you, hey, did you go to this shop? Did you go to that shop? We don't get a lot of that down here. But we also don't have as many shops down here. Yeah, it, it's starting to happen down here. Uh, but it's not like, I mean, Cincinnati, Cincinnati is me is the Mecca for Star Wars right. for Kenner because that's where Kenner was located. So yeah. it's got a built in, uh, community already got a built, built in lore, but, um, yeah. We did more sightseeing this time too. Yeah. So that was cool. I like to go for more than just Star Wars. <laughs> <gasps> There's more than Star Wars in Cincinnati? Well, there's breweries. Breweries. Yes, we are big fans of beer. Big, big, big fans of beer. So we like, anywhere we go, one of the first things we're looking up is like, where are all the breweries? <laughs> yeah, breweries and toy shops. Yeah, and I was actually pretty upset and disappointed. I went to St. Augustine recently with my daughter, what, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Um, in June, in the beginning of June, and they don't have breweries. 
They have bars that have like local beer and stuff. And they also have like basic, you know, domestic beers on tap and things, but not like an actual brewery. At least not what I'm used to like here locally. Like we have breweries and they have like food trucks and like really cool sitting areas and just kind of hang out and do whatever. But they didn't have all that kind of stuff down there. It was just bars. Right. Because it's all like seafood restaurants and bars and ocean stuff. So I guess they're not, I don't know. But yeah, breweries is one of our big things that we like to do, even locally. When we go to my parents have a retirement home up near Helen, we always venture into like North Carolina. We'll go to like Franklin, Silva. We just go all over. We will travel for beer. Yes. (laughs) We also travel for Star Wars. (laughs) 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 We travel much farther for Star Wars and include beer in those trips. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, no Cincinnati this year, which is, it's kind of a bummer, but I'm kind of looking forward to having a little bit of a break from it. But financially, I mean, we've, uh, uh, sorry, my dog's eating tissues. Uh, so it just, it's nice. It's going to be nice to have a little bit of a break from Cincinnati because we, uh, you know, I did Disney, you did Fort Harris, uh, yeah, St. Nice Augustine. Thing. So couple of big trips and then we've got another big trip we're hoping to take in next year to go to uh california which as soon as we said san diego started looking at the map and i'm like you know you know what san diego is not far from and of course you're like yes i know i've already looked yes well (laughs) i have family in a couple different areas in california one of the one i have an aunt and uncle in el cajon which is an hour north of mexico and then also an hour away from Disney. So we're planning that instead of just taking our normal week vacation, we're probably going to go for like a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, I'm hoping it'll work out. And since we're going out of town, out of the country, my, my work is all of a sudden like, hey, you can take a longer vacation because you're going out of the country. So technically, yeah, we are. So hey, we're going to work it however we can. Exactly. <laughs> Get a little bit longer trip and yeah. spend the two or three days up in uh Rosarita. Yeah, Rosarita and spend a couple of days at, at uh, Disneyland, which I'm looking forward to. Because going to Celebration and just staring at Disneyland from behind the wall really sucked. Well, you were only there for three, four days? Yeah. Yeah, which was only during the convention when right. you came home. Yeah. So that was kind of rough. Which that was a cool story, too, because Jason had already gotten hotels booked. Yeah. For the convention and he just wasn't sure if he was going or not if he was going to cancel them or and we were, we were all the three of us were in a car going to some toy show going yeah. south. we were in the car for a while and they're talking about it and i'm like well where's the dates and they give me the dates and i'm pulling up my phone i'm like okay i'm booking you guys tickets you're going <laughs> she's very much an enabler too oh i'm probably the worst <laughs> you really i'm are. the best but i'm the worst i'm the worst at that like he he mentioned um who was it? Michael J. Fox. Yeah. And Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. We're going to be at that convention in Oregon. Yeah, in Portland. They're actually in Portland. Be, yeah. And I was like, oh, a convention. Oh, he sent me the link to the convention. So what do I do? I immediately get on the horn and I'm looking up where it's at. I'm looking at hotels. I'm pulling up flights. I message him back like, what, 15, 20 minutes later? Yeah. I said, okay, I can book this flight. It's this much money. Are we going or not? <laughs> Or is he going or not? Right. And I had actually reached out to a friend that lives out there. I'm like, hey, do you have an available couch? Because my husband's coming. And what started squashing it was that he had family in town. So he had negative couches. And then come to find out that convention is not reliable. So he was, he kind of turned me down of even attempting to go out there and find a hotel because a lot of times when they announce people are coming, then they cancel or they or it was a spoof or something. But then they ended up being there, right? Yeah. So, oh well. I'm showing her Chicago in middle August. This year? Yeah. I keep waiting for Fan, Fan Expo keeps bringing Michael J. Fox around. And they do a, a they're there in middle August. They're going to be there. So I don't know. I, I, he, um, oh, Jane, God. Yeah, it was one Carlo Esposito. He's making the rounds though. There, yeah. I keep waiting because Christopher Lloyd's doing like this backwoods con in Mississippi. <laughs> so I keep waiting for him. He's doing, oh, or it's not, yeah, it's like five hours, five hours away. I've looked at it. 
Um, and I'm like, why can't he come to Dragon Con? Or why can't Michael J. Fox come to Dragon Con? So I kind of have a feeling that Michael J. Fox may have an exclusivity deal with Fan Expo or the company uh -huh. that runs them. So that's why he's not coming any closer. But I I, I don't know. I, I he's it well, would be cast is gonna be there. Yeah, I've already met Biff. I met Biff a while ago and I've met um shoot his girlfriend, which I can't think of her name right now. Uh oh. You're a terrible fan. I really am. I met her up in Nashville a few years ago, the first one from the first movie. Lorraine. Lorraine. Yes. Leah Thompson. Leah Thompson. No, not that's his mom. Well, that's who's gonna be there at this one. Yeah, that's his mom. Wasn't it his mom? Oh wait, boy. Never yes. mind. I don't know. Yes, they, he kisses yes. his mother, I remember? Okay, yes. that's I'm getting confused. It's a beautiful love story about how a boy falls in love with his mom in the film. When he goes back in the back in the past. <laughs> back to the <laughs> when he goes to the past. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he could be his own dad. He could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. So yeah. Um so this is August? That's in August. Three days? Three days. Four days. Four days. That's fun filled culture fan. Fan culture. So I keep waiting for the Rebels cast to come to Dragon Con. I keep waiting. I know Freddie Prince Jr. is supposed to be at Dragon Con, but they haven't announced any of the others cast. I know Steve Bloom, which is Zeb, is at another convention that weekend. So I don't know. Dragon Con to me, it feels like they're dragging the uh, cast, the guest uh, announcements through the you're just dragging them out. These ticket prices are really good. Are they? Yeah. For the con or for the autographs? For the con. Yeah, how much are the tickets for the con? Uh, single days, 22, four day pass, 89, and ultimate wow. fan packages, 119. Wow, a convention for 20 bucks. That's insane. VIP packages available starting at 399. Wow, that's actually good for VIP, depending on what starting you're doing. At starting at 399. So. <sighs> I just wish it... Well, Chicago's, what, 12 hours in a car? Yes, I have made that trip by myself. Yeah. It's a long trip. I'd rather do it the way we did it when we flew into St. Louis and backtracked cool. up yeah. 66. For our honeymoon, we flew into St. Louis, got a rental car, drove old Route 66 up to Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, to the end of it. Yeah, to the end of it, and then... From there, oh, we do travel for tattoos as well yeah, we because yeah. once we got to Chicago, then we went to Milwaukee so we could get tattooed. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Yeah, that's the second time we traveled to Milwaukee to get tattooed because the first time we were going to a reunion in Minnesota, and Glenn's like, "Hey, you want to take a detour? Like, for what? To get tattooed?" I'm like, "Well, of course I do. <laughs> Why not?" So that was. That was before we got married. Yep. Took a detour the day before we went to the reunion. Mm -hmm. Stopped in Waukesha, Wisconsin to uh, Scully's Jedi Tattoo. Yep. He's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. So, you want it's a Star Wars tattoo? Check him out. Yep. Uh, yeah, and I've gotten, we've gotten tattooed in Florida. We've gotten tattooed in Milwaukee. We've gotten tattooed. Where else? I've gotten tattooed in Tennessee. You've got Yeah. Where else? I don't know. Uh, I've been tattooed. Florida, Alaska, uh, Georgia. Actually, I think those are the only states that I've ever gotten tattooed in. It is funny because the ta my ta our tattoos are sort of like our collection. Or they are a part of our collection, but you, know, you start talking to people and they're like, where do you get tattooed? And then you start pointing out all these people that you've gotten tattooed from and you get, I've, I've gotten tattooed at a convention. I don't know if you've ever gotten tattooed at a convention, but. No, because your tattoo went over time. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, but then you end up meeting people like I've got one lady that was in Australia, that from Celebration that was in Australia. You got tattooed in California. And I got tattooed in California by somebody in Atlanta. That lives in Atlanta uh, that I got tattooed by two months later in Atlanta. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> so then you're like, you're like, oh, yeah, I got tattooed from this lady who's in Australia. And they're like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. No, she was in at a convention in Orlando and we met up at the convention and got that's when I got the tattoo. Um, so it, it, it's yeah, they're part of our collection, too. There are art. We collect art. <laughs> yeah, we collect a ton of art. Yes, that's, we collect lots of art. Yeah, and every time Christian comes up with something new, you're just like, damn it. Yes. <laughs> we 
we are reliable collectors. Yes. <laughs> Certain artists know that we like their stuff, and then when they put new things out or they're about to put new things out, they reach out, and then Glenn's like, babe, can I have some money? Yeah. I need lots and lots and lots of money. Right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fun coming to you and being like, hey, can I have several thousand dollars? And you're like, what? No. <laughs> I can come up with some of it. <laughs> yeah, so I need lots of money to buy this. And you're just like, damn it. Let me check our reserves. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. After we're we're still recovering from our remodel, so that's why the trips are kind of put on hold. Unless they're like free trips. So like if we can go stay with family somewhere, because Glenn has family down in Louisiana, south of New Orleans, where he grew up that we can stay with them. So that's kind of a, a free trip because we're not paying like hotel. It's just gas and food and like whatever kind of crap you buy. Right. So Florida, we, we can kind of sort of do that in Florida. It's like if we stay with your kids or if we stay with my sister or friends, we can kind of make it a free trip. It's hard to do that to be staying with family though, because then you feel obligated to like hang out with them when really you just Want a room. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, excuse me. Right, it's exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, but we do have the Chewbacca trip planned. So, yeah, that, that's that the only other trip. That one is one that we do not miss. <laughs> no. We, can, we, we don't can. miss that. The bed and breakfast owners know that when it, the dates are released for the next Chewbacca, we get this room. Right. They automatically put us down as soon as they find out the dates, and then they reach out to us and say, hey, this is what's happening. And we're like, yes, we agree. Right. <laughs> we will be there. <laughs> and, and we discovered the last couple of trips we can squeeze like, what we also like doing is squeezing like what I call like four trips in one. So we end up seeing New Orleans. We end up going to Mardi Gras Parade. We sneak, seeing in my fam seeing my family in. Yeah. Uh, so when I, when we can make a lot of bang for the buck, that's when we end up going. Oh yeah. And we always find new stuff to do too. So yeah. I think when it starts coming to the point where we're doing the same things over and over again, we might switch it up some, but like this last time we went, what did we do? We we went to the Mardi Gras Museum. Yeah, and we toured. We we ventured out a little bit more. Um, yeah, found a good a good restaurant and then some a guy that did some folk art. Oh, picked yeah. up a couple yeah. of pieces mm -hmm. from him, but, and you know it's it stinks when you're like going to a place like that and you think maybe it'll be cheap, and then you pick up a piece and it's a thousand dollars, and you're like crap, and it's <laughs> an like, eight by ten. Can you show me the section of um, uh, production stuff? Yeah. For maybe like 20 bucks? <laughs> yeah. And then you end up buying a sign that you kind of like just because you've spent so much time. I, mean, I love the sign we got from them, but yeah. you know, it was it was like 120 bucks, and you're like, damn it, I don't really want to pay this much for it, but I just already spent an hour Googling over all your stuff, so you, you kind of you're, feel guilty about so you end up buying don't a piece. Don't do that. <laughs> It is a cool piece. It's an awesome piece. Yeah. And when they take the time and sit there, especially if you're initiating a conversation, like, how do you do this stuff? And you're asking all the, you know, the questions and, and like, you're just having a really good conversation. Then you kind of feel obligated to do stuff. But. Well, then we also found a good restaurant out of the thing. So. Yeah, that's true. They referred us to a restaurant, which happened to be selling some of his art. And we bought another piece. And then we bought another piece of his art. <laughs> and I don't even know how much it was at the shop, but at the restaurant the woman one guy said it was this price and the woman the manager was like no i'm pretty sure it's this and i was like i'm gonna go with her price because it's less right <laughs> <laughs> like i said i'm cheap <laughs> yes we are you are we pay up for stuff that's when we feel it's worth it right but yeah not to try to discount the value of somebody's art correct but we have limited space now <laughs> so we do have to be picky. Yeah, we did take a wall down. We added a wall. We added a wall, but not not nearly as big as the wall we took down. Exactly. Which was kind of like two walls because we had art on both sides of it. Yeah, we did. It was like crap. But... Yeah, we had to do a major purge of all stuff, mm -hmm. which was definitely needed. We filled a whole roll-off dumpster. Like a 20 foot dumpster, 15, yeah, 20 foot dumpster, yeah, full of crap that we filled before construction started. <laughs> we did donate a lot though, yeah, we did like a lot of the kids' toys and stuff. I, I brought to work, and I have a lot of co workers who are popping out babies now, so 
Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm past that stage now. You yes, we are. <laughs> now when you have grandbabies, it's kind of it's time to quit. Yes. Mm-hmm. When we almost had a grandbaby and a child the same age. Yeah, that would have been <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Kind of sort of feel like we dodged a bullet. <laughs> Just a little bit. Because <laughs> we would still only be eight years into it. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah. There definitely, then there definitely wouldn't be a Heroes Con and a no, no. remodel and no. celebration. No separate vacations. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm glad. Yeah, I'm kind of glad. Yeah, another, yeah. Charlie, what's fun is when, like, celebration, speaking of celebration, like, you're like, where's celebration going to be next year? And I'm like, Japan. And you're like, oh, hell no. Mm hmm. <laughs> you had a hard enough time with Anaheim. And then, like, I guess it got delayed. And then when things started falling into place, you're like, just, just go. Have just fun. Just go. Bye. Have a good time. Yeah. I'll enjoy my vacation away from you. <laughs> you enjoy your vacation with all your Star Wars fans and friends and yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of have a little staycation. Right. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Yeah. I don't know. So what's the worst part about being married to a uh, Star Wars collector? Oh. I don't really think there is a worst part. You always keep me on my toes, that's for sure. <laughs> so, not only are you a Star Wars collector, but you're an enthusiast, and you are a huge part of our local club, so you have your hands in that all the time, and you're planning things, and you're doing weekly podcasts, so you're very, very busy. Yes. Um, we do have some conflicting scheduling between the two of us sometimes, because like I have my own thing that I like to do, too. So... Yeah. <laughs> so I'm either off running with you to like, and I love doing the toy shows and stuff, and I love going to the club meetups, but sometimes it conflicts with other things that I want to do, and I hate to miss the, the toy shows because I have become friends with a lot of those people too in the club meetups. So, because there's times when I'll show up separately from you and people are like, where's Lynn? Right. And I'm sure if you show up without me or I'm just not, I happen to walk a different direction at the time, people are like, where's Nadie? Exactly. Yeah, you tell a pretty funny story because I was up in Nashville at a convention and you went to a show here and oh, you yeah. text me and you're just like, damn it, I'm one of you now. Because <laughs> everybody's like, hey, Mandy, what's up? How you doing? And yeah. you're just like, crap. That was bizarre. It was the first time I'd gone to a toy show by myself. And I'm walking and I'm recognizing people thinking like, oh, they're not going to recognize me because they see so many people. And most of them are like, oh, hey, Glenn's life. Yeah, it's me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're recognizing me. And a lot of them were like, hey, Mandy. So I just was baffled that people were recognizing me, especially without you. But I only see them like once every few months. But I guess they're so used to seeing me with you mm -hmm. and people know you so well and they're seeing me with you a lot. So then they're getting to know me pretty well too. So yeah, that was it. And I actually got a lot of stuff for you at that toy show. You really did. But you got, and you didn't get anything. No. You got a lot of stuff for me though. Yeah. I don't know if I picked up anything for myself at that show. But yeah, I just remember like every five minutes I'm taking pictures. Do you have this? Do you need this? Do you want this? <laughs> yeah. And then I'm fine. I don't, yeah, I, I, I was at a Star Wars convention and you were finding better Star Wars stuff. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the ICCCCCB? Then you found some evil, some stuff for me there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. Okay. I guess we'll wrap it up then. Oh. You got, we've been on talking. You, you're like, I can't believe we're going to talk for an hour. I'm so, like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're at? at 50, 48 minutes. I didn't realize that we were going to, I was going to be able to do that. <laughs> so that is one thing that I noticed when we were down south. We did stop, when Ty and I went to St. Augustine recently, we stopped at a few flea markets on our way down. Mm -hmm. um, we, we stopped at several antique shops. I didn't find a lot of anything. Yeah. Just like local beachy stuff and you know, just old timey things, but none of the stuff that like we look for, like Star Wars or any of my, any of the stuff that I collect. Um, normally when we go places, I like to look for estate sales and it did not even cross my mind. Well, you were down there, you went down there on a Saturday, so it would have been, and you came back on a Friday, so you would have right. missed them all. 
Well, when we went down Saturdays, when we had all the flea markets oh, okay. between here and there, there wasn't any, there was one flea market right before we crossed into Florida. Mm -hmm. It was like maybe five miles out. And all the rest of the flea markets and stuff are in Florida. So right. we were able to hit those. Um, had we left a little earlier in the day, because we kind of left late, which we normally leave at like around four or five o'clock in the morning. But because this was just me and my daughter, we were kind of like taking our time. I don't think we left until eight. Yeah. Seven or eight. Yeah. yeah. So then there was one big, big, big flea market that we wanted to stop at. And it was shutting down. Like you could see the parking lot was just had a couple of speckles of cars in it. So we decided not to stop there. Um, but then like all the thrift stores and antique malls and stuff that we went to, there wasn't much of anything. Right. So it's just not the right area for it, I suppose. Yeah. And Florida is normally pretty good. There is some, some cool shops down there, but you were up north. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we I there's one that we hit last time we were coming home that I sent you a lot of pictures of yeah. that. That must be coming up seventy five. Because okay. we came up ninety five this time. Gotcha. And yeah, to see that that you had found that one that had a bunch of Star Wars stuff in it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I bought that Dawn Post Ewok mask. Right. At that one. So I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. All right. Well, thanks for coming around. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It wasn't that bad, was it? I was a little nervous. <laughs> I, I'm very structured, and I was like, Lynn, do we have, you know, like an outline? Do we have, like, points of, like, what we're going to talk about? And he's like, no, we just go flow. Yeah. So, which is normally me, I go with the flow, and kind of like, what happens, happens. Right. <laughs> so, this, this, I'm surprised. Awesome. I was able to talk this long. <laughs> You're always a good talker. Yeah. I'm not a very good listener. No, you're not. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> well, let's see if I can do this per bam off the top of my head. Thank you for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. If you could, leave us a five-star review where you listen to podcasts. Thank you for Alfonso Riviera for the Smuggler's Galaxy logo and Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro re-release VC66 hashtag vote with your wallet. This is the way. Say it. This is the way. <laughs>